This video is sponsored by Skillshare. I went through four years of pre-med undergrad specializing in human biology and molecular biology research. I wrote my MCAT and now I am a direct entry PhD student doing immunology and medical research at one of the top research institutes in Canada. I have been studying for almost every single day for the past six years and I've had a lot to learn about how to study more effectively, how to study smarter, and how to manage my time so that I can make time outside of school to do other things like extracurricular activities and spend time with friends and family. So here are some of the study tips that I used every single day to get me into the research field and help me balance everything else in my life. In terms of memorizing a lot of things in a short period of time, I feel like I have nailed the routine down because of my pre-med degree and as well as me going through the MCAT. One of the best tools for memorization are definitely Anki cards. It's essentially digitized cue cards, but the beauty in Anki cards is that you can actually prompt the card to return and ask you the same question again if you don't know the card the first or the second time that it shows you. I used Anki cards religiously throughout my entire degree and I recently used it again for my PhD qualifying exam and it is just so good. I love this tool so much. Other more psychological methods that I use to study and do better on exams is definitely to study in the environment that I know I'm going to take the exam in. For example, when I was writing my MCAT, which is an eight hour long biology, chemistry, physics exam, I actually did the full length practice exams not at home on my MacBook but instead at the school library using one of the public computers and the whole rationale behind it is that I know that at the testing center for this MCAT exam I'm gonna have to use a computer that I'm not familiar with in an environment that I don't feel super comfortable in it's very different from taking an exam from home studying in that environment really helps to set my mind to study an exam mode it's the same thing if I were to write an exam that I know is going to be on paper, instead of heavily relying on just reading notes off of my computer to study them, I will also try to have a pen and paper on hand and write down my notes so that I can practice writing on paper in full sentences some of the key ideas and the things that I need to memorize, practice my spelling and my grammar. And there's a lot of things that you don't realize you don't know until you have to regurgitate it back onto paper. One of the tools I use every single day as a student to keep consistent consistent and manage my time is to make to-do lists. I personally keep two separate planning lists. One of them is my weekly to-do list, which has all of my assignments, all of the deadlines, everything that I want to do within the next week or two. The Microsoft to-do app for this checklist is amazing for that because I always have that app on my computer, on my desktop open. It's really meant for big picture items. I will write something down like need to send manuscript draft in by August 20th. So I know that in the next two weeks, I have have this deadline going on. But what I think is more important is to create everyday to-do lists and write down all of the tasks that I can do within an hour or two hours maximum. I make a new list every single morning and they contain more concrete items that I can get done within the day. So if I wrote down in my big weekly to-do list to finish a manuscript in a week, some of the smaller items that I'll put on my daily to-do list would be to draft up introduction, finish methods and results. Writing things that are achievable and realistic for this list is really important because if you don't finish your tasks on a list that is way too long, it will end up demotivating you, making you more dissatisfied. Having this list with really attainable goals is really nice because it's super satisfying to check off one item at a time. And then at the end of the day, when I read this list again and I see that I've done everything, I feel really good and I'm motivated again to go and do work again the very next morning. I started adopting this technique when I was in the second year of my university and honestly it has saved me from procrastination and missing deadlines. And the great thing about this is that you can use this tool in many different formats. Personally I like to keep my weekly to-do list on my computer and then just write my daily to-do list on a line paper or a scrap piece of paper. If you are motivated by cute planners, I loved the Muji weekly planners because it has enough space for you to write down both your weekly and your daily goals. Now it has taken me a really long time to learn learn how to study smarter and more effectively. As a third year PhD student now, I feel like my schedule just continues to get more and more busy and I'm always looking for ways to increase my productivity and get my work done faster. Skillshare has been a great tool for me to access classes
classes made by other experts to teach me how to be even more productive every single day and staying consistent throughout school. Skillshare is the leading online platform for creative learning, offering thousands of classes taught by industry professionals in areas like film, illustration, design, freelancing, productivity, and more. It's a great resource to help you elevate your career, develop new skills, explore hobbies, or even to grow your side projects. I've been watching Ali Abdal, the productivity king, for a number of years now, and it's been so fun seeing him on Skillshare sharing his passion for productivity and helping other students learn how to be more effective inside and out of school. Skillshare is a super diverse and dynamic platform. They have a huge repertoire of classes. With that being said, I am a huge learner. All of the downtime that I have during the summer, I am always trying to learn new skills. And one thing that I've been so interested in recently are creativity and design softwares like Adobe Illustrator and InDesign. And I'm trying to learn this so that I can go back to school in the new school year and demonstrate a more diverse and holistic skill set on my resume and CV. I find Skillshare so useful and that's why the first 500 people that use my link into the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare for you to use. It is a completely free month of Skillshare so that you can also use it and enjoy it from home and then apply your new skills into your daily life. Now I just talked a little bit about how I'm a person that can't really sit still at my desk. I love to fidget a lot. So one of the things that I've been really focusing on in terms of studying more effectively is how to be engaged and stay engaged at my desk for hours and hours on end. A really Really useful skill that I have is the ability to watch my lectures on two times speed. Some of my lectures from my undergrad and my PhD now are recorded and posted online for other students to watch at their own time. And whenever there is that resource available, I am always watching my lectures from home on two times speed. It is definitely a skill set that you have to get used to and to learn so that you can understand words at two times speed, but it is also such a useful skill. Not only am I cutting down my lecture watching time and studying time in half but watching it on two times speed also forces me to take more effective notes i'm making sure that i'm only taking down key notes so that i don't miss the next sentence that my professor says and when it comes time to study my notes for the final exam I'm also studying more effectively because I don't have to sieve through all of these words that I'm just simply recording down. Now attending classes remotely and learning online, there is a trade-off because you're missing that interaction with your classmates and your professor. But some of the ways that I've combated that is just making use of the time that I get to work with my classmates. So during tutorial sessions or lab sessions where I get to interact with other classmates, I definitely try to do that as much as possible. And I also make an effort to go to my professor's office hours or email whenever I have questions so that I can build a professional relationship and rapport with my professors in case down the line, I need to ask for a reference letter or ask for more opportunities. And I feel like this next point would be a little bit controversial, but it definitely works for me. And that is to actually put put Netflix or YouTube on in the background while I'm studying. More often than not, I find myself having to sit at my desk for full-time hours, basically for six to nine hours every day to do computational analysis, to study for exams, to write a manuscript, and I simply just get so bored sitting at my desk for that long. One thing that I do is definitely to put up a TV show or a movie or a really lengthy video. It's essentially like listening to music while you're studying, except I don't listen to music and I just put on Netflix in the background instead. And I usually put on a TV show that I have watched before and that's really lengthy. Modern Family is a great one. Or I love the YouTube channel Bread Story, which is essentially this YouTuber that goes around to Japanese bakeries and just films them making bread with ASMR. The point of having a video in the background is not that I can just be distracted and watch it the entire time. It kind of just serves as white noise so that I am somewhat engaged in a video that is a little bit interesting and not just staring at a blank white document and typing for six to nine hours straight. And it is true, your productivity can go down just a little bit if you use this technique, but I think the trade-off is so, so worth it because I get to study at my desk for way, way longer and I don't feel like I'm losing attention and focus for my work. Another way that I really try to keep track of my time and not under or over study is to study in blocks and taking productive breaks. I'm sure we are no stranger to the Pomodoro technique, which is essentially studying in a set block amount of time and then taking breaks after that time and you will repeat this for a few times to study throughout the day. Most people like to study for 50 minutes and then you would maybe take a 10 or 15 minute break. Personally, for me, 
me, I can't sit still for that long. 50 minutes just seems like such a long time to study. And I've always been the one to need to get up, to be distracted, to fidget. So usually when I do Pomodoros, I usually study for about 30 minutes and then take a five minute break. I love the Flow app because it really does allow you to customize your Pomodoro sessions, how long you want to study for and how long you want to take your breaks for. And you can even change this day to day depending on what you have to do or how you are feeling. I think the more important thing that I have taken into practice is to take more productive breaks. And what I really mean by that is that I have tried to stay off my phone as much as possible when I am taking breaks and literally just doing anything else other than going on my phone. What I found before when I would take these Pomodoro breaks is that I would immediately turn on my phone, go onto Instagram, and I would just scroll and scroll and scroll. And next thing you know, I've been scrolling for 45 minutes. What I have done recently though is to actually put my phone away during these Pomodoro sessions. I'll go and make myself a coffee. I'll read my book for five minutes. Recently, I've been loving knitting and crocheting, so I might do that as well. Literally anything that keeps my brain engaged and active, but away from my work without having to turn on my phone has been so, so effective for me. And when that break is done, I'm not tempted to go and keep scrolling on my phone. I just stop my break and then I go back to studying and it just keeps me super productive and motivated the entire time. Okay, so those are all of the study tips that I have that I have been using every single day during the last six years in academia and I hope you learned something as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe and please comment down below if you have learned something new today or if you're already doing some of these tips and tricks. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.